So, hey, good morning. I think it says we're live. Uh, welcome everyone. back to Born Christian Centre Worship on the Sofa. We're delighted to have you with us as we play through some more worship songs for you to join in with from the comfort of your sofa at home. If you are joining us live, um, well done on waking up at the right time. <laughs> if you are watching this later, we know why. <laughs> Um, we believe there's been some birthdays this week, so in a minute we're going to sing happy birthday. Um, so people that we know it's been, we know it's Nigel's today, um, it's been Sarah Bryant's we believe, um, also John Nartie's, um, and last week we, um, we forgot to sing it, so we're also going to catch up by singing happy birthday to my mum Nancy and also to Jim. Um, if there's been any others, maybe write in the comments um, and then we'll hopefully sing to them as well yeah you've got you've got a minute or so <laughs> yeah and then we're gonna do it so i am i am loving the comments fast. actually the last time but i didn't i didn't know that was a thing do you know that was no possible? i didn't know what's gonna happen <laughs> it, it was a great moment when we just clicked go live and for us nothing changes because <laughs> obviously we're still looking at ourselves on the screen um it was that fantastic moment when these comments started picking up out of i don't know where we suddenly um, were like oh people are actually here <laughs> yeah, it was it's a fantastic reminder that actually we're worshipping God together mm. this morning. Um, before we start, um, we thought it'd be good to give you a heads up about the plan for the next few weeks. Mm. Um, so we've arranged um, a bit of a, a three-week worship on the sofa rotor going forward. So um, you've got us again this week, but next week worship on the sofa is going to be hosted by the Pike family and they're also going to be doing a um, physically distant but no less holy communion uh, so you've now got a week's notice to find yourself some bread or bread equivalent um, I know the Peyton family are opting for hot cross buns you can't get much more holy than <laughs> bread with a cross on it um, and some wine or wine equivalent um, Joe is now pushing for um, black currant cider again Influence of the Patons. Um, the week after that is Easter Sunday. Um, and Easter Sunday worship on the sofa is going to be housed at the Meager yeah. household. So rest assured that will be great fun. fun. Yes. We, I, um, we, saw, we saw a number of photos this week of you guys worshipping from home um, last Sunday. And there was a lot of dressing gowns, a lot of snuggling up on the sofa. Um, and then we got a photo from Solly of the Mega household. Well, I'm not sure there was even a sofa in the photo. <laughs> with, uh, dancing around the room. Dancing around <laughs> the living room. It's going to be fantastic. We'd have it any other way, would we? I'm now picturing banners and... Um, oh, yeah, flags. Flags. It's going to yeah. be great. Empty tomb reenactments. <laughs> so I've got yeah. all that to look forward to. Um, anyway... Make sure you got a cup of tea. Oh, let's do the birthdays then. Yeah, okay. we've not had any so, messages from people about birthdays. We'll, we'll do um, Nigel, yep. Sarah, John, Jim, Nancy. Okay, remember that order. We've not got people to point at today. I've already forgotten. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Okay, so um, this week, like last week, we're just going to be playing through some songs for you to join me with at home. Um, we've got some thoughts and some readings and a new song that we will Ooh. share with you as, as we go. So I'm sure you've had a cup of tea to... Sorry you've had time to get a cup of tea by now, so we'll make a start, shall we? God, we ask that you will help us to focus on you this morning. Mm -hmm. 
we just, Lord, I just pray for a real sense of your peace and your joy over everybody joining us mm. this morning, Lord. God. Help us, remind us, Lord, of the truths of your love and your faithfulness this morning. Mm. Amen. Amen.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength And my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul the storm, louder and louder, 
sugar tea. Um, we've been thinking this week about how sometimes when we're, well, perhaps when we're able to gather um, with others in the church building um, on a Sunday morning, choosing to worship God um, and singing praises and adoration, choosing to raise a hallelujah is the easiest and most natural thing mm. possible. And it somehow you kind of almost get onto a bit of autopilot. But there will also be times, particularly when, we're not able to gather together in a in a church building um, when choosing to give thanks to God, choosing to put aside time simply to worship him isn't easy at all. And I believe that actually it's. Uh, yeah, a lot of us in positions now where thanking God doesn't feel the natural response mm. to the circumstances that we're in. It's. Um, it might be that we're feeling distant from God. It might be that we're anxious about what the future holds, um, that we're facing disappointment after disappointment, that we're anxious about our health, anxious about the health of others, um, that we're grieving, that we've lost job security, or even that just being in your own house, there's so many distractions going on that you can't focus on God. Um, but I believe that it's in these times that consciously making the decision to worship God mm. um, is, as it says in Hebrews, um, a continuous um, sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice, sacrificial, because, for that very reason, because it isn't easy at all. Um, and sometimes, um, if we force ourselves to thank God, it can feel a bit, a bit fake, um, a bit forceful, and a bit, um, a bit awkward at times. But actually, I think that just makes it all the more precious to God because it's that much more costly to us. Um, and it is in these times that we need to be praising God and thanking God mm. the most because it's when we proclaim these truths that we chase away our fear, mm. we chase away our doubt, we chase away our anxiety mm. and we turn the focus off of ourselves and on to God, away from our situation and on to who God is is and actually um yeah we're quite used to looking at the world through the human perspective of what's humanly possible but when we turn our attention to god um we see the world the way he wants us to see it mm. and see that all things are possible through him who has power mm. over all things and not only that when we make that conscious decision to worship we're that much more aware of god's presence with us um which is that much more important in a time when we need God's presence with us. Mm. Um, so on that note, we'd love to share a new song with you guys. This is a song um, that Ren Collective released Friday, I think so, yeah. two days ago. Um, and since this has really been uh, the anthem in the Mitchell household, uh, we hope this can be your anthem too. It's really appropriate for these times. Um, can we get the lyrics? Mm. Oh, Joe, yeah. Absolutely love the lyrics um, to this one. When the enemy says I'm done, I lift my praises. When the world comes crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. I choose to worship. I choose you now. Yeah. 
of the darkest night in Joy of the suffering I see in love. I will praise you through the fire, through the storm, and through the flood. There is nothing that could ever steal my soul. In the valley, you are worthy. Bye. 
of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty. pray that through all, for all those across the church today who are suffering with respiratory infections, COVID-19 or non-COVID-19, we ask that you will heal each and every one of them, Lord, in your name. Amen. Lord, we pray 
with governments around the world, give them wisdom to make the right decisions for the right reasons at the right times. Amen. Amen. That's from Catherine. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Lord, we thank you that especially during this time of social distancing that you have made a way for us to draw close to you. We thank you for your presence and thank you that nothing can ever separate us from your presence, Lord. Thank you for your unfading love. Thank you that through the season of change, you never change, Lord. Thank you that we can put our trust in you.
to you again and again. I call out to you again and again. You are my And I will love you all by strength. And I will love you all by shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. And hallelujah, our God. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Forever all my days, hallelujah. Oh, and hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah. John and Angela um, for sending us a really encouraging email this week that we'd love to share with you all. We think it would be really encouraging for everyone. Um, so um, this was sent for them yesterday. They said, we read John 14 today in our Bible study, particularly verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Almighty God really doesn't want us to be worried or fearful. And when he gives us that direct command, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He also gives us the grace to be obedient. So as we step out, not to be fearful, he fills us with his Holy Spirit power to actually do it. Slave to fear. I am a child of God. No, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody. You 
Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Yeah, Lord God, we thank you that if we fix our eyes on you, we will not grow weary, mm. we will not lose heart. Mm. Help us to run this race that you've laid before us, mm. Lord. Help us to know that you are in control of all mm. things.
for the heart that holds on a glorious life beyond all compare and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes God is with me, and if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Who then shall I fear? Oh no, never let go, never let go, never storm. Oh no, never let go, every high, every low.
just want to share a couple of thoughts with you guys, if that's all right. Um, I've been thinking a bit this week about what is the church. Obviously, at the moment, we're not able to gather together. So it's um, interesting to think about how we do church and what the church is meant to be um, at this time. And the Bible talks about the church as being the bride of Christ and also the body of Christ. And also each of us individually are the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. He comes and lives within us. And I've been thinking about the fact that um, if we are the bride of Christ, dearly loved by Jesus, and if we are the temples of the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit living in us, then we don't have to be people who are afraid. And we can be a people who are just full of love and compassion, but not full of fear. Um, and that also now is a really great time to rise up and be that and show the world um, what the church is supposed to be. Um, and obviously I'm thinking on what the church is supposed to be then, I kind of thought, well, let's look at Acts because that's what the early church was. And it's really interesting to kind of read about how the church started off. Um, and so I've been reading through Acts a bit and it's really interesting that these were people who were living through persecution and they were scattered. Um, but in that time of fear for them, they didn't kind of shrink back, but they actually um, still continued to share the gospel with all the people they came into contact with. Um, and yeah, then I was reading through, um, I've got this new cover to cover Bible, which is really cool. It kind of goes through everything chronologically rather than in the system that we usually have the Bible. Um, and in, in Acts, it um, has the bit when um, James, the brother of John, is killed and then it goes straight into the book of James by Jesus' brother. Um, and it's really interesting that he writes um, to the 12 tribes scattered and he talks about how he's writing to those people. And then he says, um, consider it pure joy when you face trials of any kind. Um, and then also straight after that, it goes to when Peter was then um, rescued from prison by an angel. Um, and then after that, it says, but the word of God continued to spread and flourish. Um, and so these people were in a really scary situation. They could lose their lives at any moment, um, but they continued to spend their lives proclaiming the good news of Jesus with joy wherever they went. And we've got that same Holy Spirit living in us. So we can be the same people that share that good news of Jesus with all that we can do. Um, and so um, I was wanted to tell you that we don't need to give up sharing the gospel at this time. And actually in this time of uncertainty and fear, people may well be looking for that hope that only God can give. So keep, um, keep sharing and keep encouraging people. Um, it also made me think a bit about the story of Esther. Um, so Esther um, was living at a time where um, there'd been a command out to kill all the Jews. Um, and Esther herself was a Jewish person and um, her her uncle told her, so she was um, married to the king and um, her uncle said to her now, now is a chance to go and tell the king not to let this order happen and to go and save the Jews and she was worried but then um, through prayer and fasting she, she went and did that um, and I really love this line that her uncle says to her and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this um, and then through doing that the, the Jewish people get saved and they, they aren't all killed um, and I just love that that point that he mays, makes that maybe you've been put on this earth at this particular time for a reason um, and I don't think it's an accident that we're all alive during this time I think God plans things and he purposes things and we're we're all living through this time for a reason um, and so yeah my um, my question to you is what are you going to do with this time you've got here right now are you going to um, live in fear or are you going to go and proclaim the gospel to people that you know? Now, obviously not face to face because we don't want to spread diseases. Um, but go out and be bold in sharing the good news that we have because it is really good news. We have this light and this joy inside of us that the world is longing for right now. And um, they need this hope that God can give. They need to know that they are loved. And the lonely people need to know that God can be with them at all times. And so we have this really good news that we should be going out and sharing with people. Obviously not going out, literally, but, you know, metaphorically. Um, yeah, so I challenge you to think and pray about who you can share this good news of Jesus with, who is in need of this hope of the gospel, um, this love of God and this peace that he alone can bring. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll do one more song and then we'll, we'll close for today. <laughs>
well keep safe continue to follow government guidance um as we said last week reach out to one another pray for each other um we've put on the comments on, on, on the description, description yeah. below the video the um the 10 prayer points that um the britons shared with us before and actually it's it's really important for us all to be praying over the situation at this time Absolutely. um so if you don't know what to pray about look at those 10 prayer points and they go through everything from stopping the spread of um, the coronavirus to those who are sick, for the health workers, um, for grieving families, for pastors, for the body of the church and for government officials and decision making, um, for those waking up in the fallout of COVID-19, um, for our mission workers and ministry work um, and for those who live and die without the knowledge of Jesus. Um, so. We'll close there, but it, you know, don't uh, rush on with your day. And perhaps sort of take fifteen minutes now mm. just to pray over those yeah, yeah. Um, prayer points as a family. Um, and yeah, remember that next week uh, we are doing Holy Communion at the Pike House. So remember to be prepared with your bread and wine or equivalents. Great. Thank you all for joining us. It's been lovely to have you. We'll see you again soon, I guess. Bye for now. Bye, bye for now. Oh, you